machines be getting even better. They don't call Super Tuesday for nothing. Former Vice President Joe Biden celebrating his Super Tuesday wins at a rally in L.A. last night. He won more than half of the 14 states up for grabs, but he didn't snag the Golden State. The AP now calling Bernie Sanders the projected winner of California. It is our campaign, our movement, which is best positioned to defeat Trump. And political analyst Joe Tuman joins us now with more on the big wins. And Joe, I have to tell you, first things first, Michael Bloomberg out. That is big news. What does that mean now for Biden? Well, it means that there's one more moderate in the in the uh, in, in this situation who's moved out. It also means that Bloomberg won't be spending money on himself. And, and uh, he spent a lot of money. He, he did. And, and frankly, in the places where he finished in third or second in a couple of places, those were votes he was taking from Biden. So uh, that support should now coalesce around Biden. The potential good news uh, in all of this, however, is also that uh, uh, if Bloomberg keeps his promise that he made uh, a month ago, that if he was not the nominee, he would be willing to spend up to a billion dollars to make sure the nominee beat Donald Trump. Uh, if he keeps his word on that, then it could be the case that uh, Joe Biden may have inherited the mother load on this, because this is a guy who is the ninth richest person in the world, and even a billion dollars to him is... Trump change. <laughs> no, or it's maybe a, Trump change. It's Trump change. There you go. It's a, it's a lot of money. Um, yeah. So, you know, Klobuchar and Buddha Judge, they both dropped out right before the primary, and that helped, it seemed to have helped Biden Absolutely. and give him a boost. Yeah, and they endorsed him, and, and of course, uh, both those individuals had voters who needed to be able to go somewhere. They both had presented themselves also as centrist moderates, and so, again, it's a natural fit for them to move towards uh, Biden as well, and uh, I think you'll see that support, maybe also with some fundraising as well. Now does the pressure fall on Elizabeth Warren? I think so, but Warren uh, feels that she's earned her place, and she has uh, in this, and, and she'll stay in this as long as she has money. Um, she's already on the ballots for some races still to come, and uh, I think in her mind, she may be looking at a strategy that says, well, since the others endorsed and helped Biden, perhaps I will direct my voters towards Bernie in this particular situation and see if I can't enlarge his base. This is the problem that Sanders has faced for the last couple of months, which is he's had a very loyal pack of support but he hasn't really enlarged uh, the scope and the size of that. And, and he's going to need to do that if he's going to stay in this race. Well, he got a lot of support here in California. He did, absolutely. Interestingly enough, primarily Hispanic Latino voters and young voters. That's, I think that's the core of his base in California. Um, but as I think we were talking about before, uh, when you look at the, some of those supporters uh, in response to how they see someone like Joe Biden, um, there's a lot of ageist comments that come out about, uh, you know, claiming that Biden is senile or that he's past it or he's too old. And, uh, the, you know, the, the biggest voting bloc in this country uh, are older voters. And uh, I don't mean anyone over the age of 50. They, right. They're likely voters. And a likely voter we define as someone who's voted in at least three consecutive elections, the, most, in the uh, three most recent consecutive elections. Uh, older voters have lots of time to study the, the programs. They talk with each other in the retirement homes or in their homes or whatever. And they vote. They turn out. Young voters like the kind that, that Sanders has energized actually have been voting as well. But historically, their record is poor. Uh, and so uh, this will, that's, you know, th this generation of, uh, of people, millennials, is the next big generation that's going to replace the baby boomers. But they haven't done it yet because they're not likely voters consistently. Well, it seems interesting. Uh, I mean, it is interesting where there's a potential ageism when it comes to Joe Biden. But when you look at President Trump, Joe Biden, and Bernie Sanders. We're all talking about 70s. And they're all in their 70s. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, but young people, they just gravitate more towards Bernie Sanders. And 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 some of these people, like Mr. Trump, you know, uh, add a little color <laughs> to the hair and to the skin and the rest of it to give them that youthful appeal. Um, but yeah, if you look at someone like Bernie Sanders, he's, 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 he's not a spring chicken either, but he has lots of energy for a man his age and, and uh, a strong appeal, interestingly enough, to people who are young enough to be his grandchildren, which is kind of touching and interesting at the same time. So you talked about youth and the Latino voters really uh, gravitating toward Bernie Sanders. How does Joe Biden then come in and trying to get some of those voters and appeal to them? Because it seems like uh, African-Americans really appeal to 
Joe Biden. They do, and, and uh, at least for the part of his strategy, to the extent there is a strategy uh, of winning the nomination, it has been mostly through seven states. Uh, you saw him do very well in those states, and there's still some to come um, where there are, are sizable African American populations who, who, for the Democratic Party at least, make up the majority, more than 50% of the vote. Uh, and uh, this, this uh, endorsement that, that uh, Biden got from uh, Representative Clyburn last week um, was was just a, a bolt of lightning into the campaign because it energized all those people who were looking for someone else, African Americans, they weren't really sure if Biden was the one and it brought them back to him. And as I was mentioning to you this morning, this helped the party as a whole to coalesce around Biden because the perception is that he is electable. He's somebody who could beat Trump. And most of the polling indicates that when you look at all the candidates head to head against Trump, Biden does the best in this. And I think so the thinking within the party is let's put our resources behind Biden. Was it surprising the results when it came to Joe Biden? Not surprising Bernie Sanders won California, but what about Joe Biden? It almost seems like he's a different person the last couple of days. Well, certainly, well, I think he's, it, it's as if he, he got a transfusion of blood that it sort of pepped him up and, and he's out here running five minute miles or something like that right now. It, it's been uh, quite a shot in the arm for him without question. But there's still a lot to come. Uh, there are many other sure. states still to go um, and there'll be some, some difficult battleground states to get through. Uh, he's going to be relying on the help, hopefully, of uh, Klobuchar and Booty Judge, for example, in the Midwestern states where he has some connection, but uh, their help would be more useful to him. And we'll have to wait and see what happens in places like Florida, um, where, or, uh, uh, for example, comments made by Sanders about uh, uh, the Fidel Castro, the regime, sure. the good things that Castro had done. You know, ex-Cuban ex exiles in, uh, in Florida don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. uh, so who's going, to, who's going to come out of this in Florida uh, with the delegates is a question that we still have to, to well, answer. Well, the Cubans in Florida, they typically vote Republican. They vote so, Republican, yeah. and but, though, but you know, in, in, in the general election, probably so but you'll have some in uh, you know maybe out of Miami-Dade or where there's a stronger uh, presence of Democrats you still have Cuban exiles there as well and they didn't want to hear that from Sanders right. without question so right. we'll see if that has an impact Joe Tuman thank you so much yeah. for your insight my pleasure thank Alrighty. you for having me well